I don't know what I'm going to call this video yet, but I imagine that the title sounds pretty clickbaity, but it's not, I promise. There's a way that you can cut down your render times by about 50% in any 3D program and it's completely free. So here's the idea. When we animate something in 3D, we don't set the movement for every frame, right? We just need to set a keyframe and the computer figures out what should happen in between. So for instance, if we keyframe the position of this ball on frame one and frame three, Blender calculates the correct position for the ball on frame two. So wouldn't it be nice if we could give the computer two finished frames and have it figure out what the frame in between should look like? Well, through the magic of AI, that's actually possible now. It's called frame interpolation. It's existed for quite a while now, but I think it's only just getting to the point where it's actually good enough to be usable. Modern systems can even handle really complex elements like transparency, smoke and motion blur. In fact, I've used it for quite a few videos on this channel in the past. All of these shots were rendered at 12 frames per second, so half the frames that you're seeing right now were created completely with AI. So here's how it works. Once you're ready to render everything out, you just need to go into your render settings and make sure that you're rendering as some sort of image sequence, and you need to tell your render engine to skip every other frame. In Blender, that's really easy to do. You just need to increase this number here and it'll now render out frame one, frame three, frame five, and it'll skip all the even numbers. Next, you're gonna need an interpolation program of some sort. I like to use this program called Floor Frames, which is completely free and it does a really good job. Inside Floor Frames, I'm gonna select the input folder, which contains our image sequence, and I'm gonna set an output file type and folder. I like to output as another image sequence for reasons I'll explain later. So since this was originally 24 frames per second, but I only rendered out half the frames, I'm gonna put the current frame rate as 12 frames per second, then I'm gonna tell floor frames to double the frame rate. There's several different AI models and modes to choose from, but for this demo, I'm just gonna leave everything on default because it does a pretty good job. Then you just need to hit interpolate and it'll take just a few seconds for your final file to be done. Now, obviously the speed of this program does depend on the hardware you're using. I do have dual RTX 3090s in the system, so it is quite fast, but even though it's practically instant for me, it'll be fast on pretty much any computer system. And then here we have the final result. We've went from a janky 12 frames per second to a smooth 24 frames per second, and it was pretty much instant. Now, of course, nothing is perfect and everything has some drawbacks and here's what the problems are with this. Sometimes it can struggle a little bit if you have very fast moving objects, if you have really noisy patterns, or if you have things that change continuously on every frame, like a blinking light. But I find if you do have any glitches and problems, they're usually limited to a very small part of the video sequence. So it's really easy just to go back, find the frames that didn't render out properly, and you can just render out the actual frames and swap them for the interpolated ones. That's why I said earlier that it's a good idea to make sure that the interpolated frames are spat out as an image sequence, because it makes it really easy just to swap out any weird frames for good ones. For instance, this shot here was a one continuous sequence. I think it was about 2000 frames. So I interpolated a thousand of those frames and I think about 30 of them I had to re-render because they didn't come out right. Like, that's nothing, that saved me nine hours or something. It's definitely worth doing. I'm curious about how many people in the community already know about interpolation and how many people are using it because it doesn't get talked about very often. So if you have been using it or you've just found out about it, let me know in the comments because I would love to hear. Remember to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and I'll catch you in a few days with another video.